Today we're going to learn about three key words that is used all the time when we discuss probability, and they are events, sample space and outcomes. To help us understand these, I want you to consider taking an ordinary two-sided coin with heads on one side and tails on the other, and think about what could happen if I were to flip that coin. Well, there's one of two things that could happen. The coin could either land head side up, or the coin could land tail side up. What I've just shown here is what we call the possible outcomes if we were to flip that coin. When we list the outcomes like this, we call this the sample space. So we can describe that there are two possible outcomes in our sample space here. So why is being able to list all the possible outcomes like this useful? Well, if I want to describe the chance or probability of something occurring, I must know how many total possible outcomes there are and how many of these outcomes are considered successful outcomes. If we know both of these things, we can describe the probability by dividing the number of successful outcomes by the number of total outcomes. So if I want to determine the probability that when I flip that coin, the land head side up, I must first determine the total possible outcomes that could occur. Here, I've shown that there are two possible outcomes that could occur. Then, to determine the probability of it landing head side up, I determine how many of the possible outcomes here meet our criteria of success. In this case, only one of the outcomes here meet our criteria of success, that being a heads. So we say that there is one successful outcome. Therefore, we can describe the probability of the coin landing head side up to be equal to 1 over 2, or a 1 in 2 chance. So here, we've described this probability as a fraction, but we can actually describe it as a decimal by converting, which would be 0.5, or as a percentage, which would be 50%. Now, if I were to go ahead and flip this coin, we would describe the outcome that has occurred here as an event. So we call something an event when we perform a trial of whatever it is that we're trying to do. In this case, we're trying to flip a coin. So the event here is flipping the coin, and that event will have an outcome. You can have more than one event. For example, what if I was to flip this coin twice? I would have two events with two outcomes. Now, when we have more than one event occurring, we can describe these events as being either independent events or dependent events. We consider two events to be independent events if the outcomes of the second event is not influenced in any way from the outcome of the first event. So let's take our example of flipping that coin. We've already determined the probability of getting a heads on the first event is a 1 in 2 chance. So if I flip that coin and got a tails on the first event, would the probability of getting the heads the next time change? Well, the coin doesn't remember what you flipped that first time. So the total possible outcomes do not change for the second flip. You've still got two possible outcomes. And out of those two possible outcomes, you've still got one successful outcome. So you still have a one in two chance of getting a heads on that second event. So it doesn't matter what you got in the first event, the probability of getting a heads in the second event is always going to be the same. So because of this, we consider each event to be independent. They don't influence one another. So what are dependent events then? Well, let's consider a bag of coloured balls like the one I've drawn here, where we've got two red balls and one green ball. If I were to pick a ball out of this bag at complete random, the probability of me selecting the red ball would be a 2 out of 3 chance. Well, let's say I pick a ball out of the bag, and I pick a red ball. Then, without putting a red ball back in the bag, I pick a second ball at complete random. What is the probability that the second pick that I have will end up being a red ball? Well, now the possible outcomes for the second selection have changed because the ball that was selected on the first event is no longer in the bag. Instead of there being three possible outcomes, there are now only two. 
Instead of there being two possible successful outcomes of selecting a red ball, there's now only one. Therefore, the probability of getting a red ball in the second selection, given our first selection was red, is a 1 in 2 chance. So you can see here that the probability of the second event occurring was directly influenced by the outcome of the first event. Therefore, we consider the probability of the second event to be dependent on the outcome of the first event. So let's summarise the words that we've learnt here today. The possible outcomes are what could occur in a given event or experiment, where the successful outcomes are the possible outcomes that meet our criteria of success. The sample space is a set of all possible outcomes that could occur in a given event or experiment, where an event is the trial of an experiment, and events have probabilities attached to them. We consider events to be independent of each other if the probability of each event occurring is not influenced in any way from the outcome of the other event, where we consider them to be dependent events if the probability of the second event is directly influenced by the outcome of the first event.